Our ancestors understood origins by extrapolating from their own experience. How else could they have done it? So the universe was hatched from a cosmic egg, or conceived in the sexual congress of a mother god and a father god, or was a kind of product of the creator's workshop, perhaps the latest of many flawed attempts. And the universe was not much bigger than we see, and not much older than our written or oral records, and nowhere very different from places that we know. We've tended in our cosmologies to make things familiar. Despite all our best efforts, we've not been very inventive. In the West, heaven is placid and fluffy, and hell is like the inside of a volcano. In many stories, both realms are governed by dominance hierarchies headed by gods or devils. Monotheists talked about the king of kings. In every culture, we imagined something like our own political system running the universe. Few found the similarity suspicious. Then science came along and taught us that we are not the measure of all things, that there are wonders unimagined, that the universe reign. Its conclusions derive from the interrogation of nature, and are not in all cases pre-designed to satisfy our wants. We recognize that even revered religious leaders, the products of their time, as we are of ours, may have made mistakes. Religions contradict one another on small matters such as whether we should put on a hat or take one off on entering a house of worship, or whether we should eat beef and eschew pork or the other way around, all the way to the most central issues such as whether there are no gods, one god, or many gods. If you lived two or three millennia ago, there was no shame in holding that the universe was made for us. It was an appealing thesis consistent with everything we knew. It was what the most learned among us taught without qualification. But we found out much since then. Defending such a position today amounts to willful disregard of the evidence and a flight from self-knowledge. We long to be here for a purpose, even though Despite much self-deception, none is evident. Our time is burdened under the cumulative weight of successive debunkings of our conceits. We're Johnny-come-latelys. We live in the cosmic boondocks. We emerged from microbes and muck. Apes are our cousins. Our thoughts and feelings are not fully under our own control. There may be much smarter and very different beings elsewhere. And on top of all this, we're making a mess of our planet and becoming a danger to ourselves. The trapdoor beneath our feet saved the lives of billions. We communicate at the speed of light and whip around the earth in an hour and a half. We have sent dozens of ships to more than 70 worlds and four spacecraft to the stars. To our ancestors, there was much in nature to be afraid of. Lightning, storms, earthquakes, volcanoes, plagues, drought, long winters. Religions arose in part as attempts to propitiate and control, if not much to understand, the disorderly aspect of nature. How much more satisfying had we been placed in a garden custom-made for us, its other...